Welcome back to a special edition of Coach's Corner, playoffs this time. I'm Jake Lancer with Danny Lynch for HWTV, and we're back again with Varsity Boys head basketball coach David Rabibo. The Wolverines are currently in open division pool play and gearing up for a rematch against rival Notre Dame. Coach, we can all feel the energy around campus, around you guys, being in open division and competing with the best of the best. The Fanatics are back, and on top of that, it feels like your team is peaking at the right time. What do you contribute to the recent success? Uh, we're healthy, um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're at the end of the tunnel here, right? Um, all season, you're kind of chasing that light, so to speak, at the end of the tunnel, and uh, it, it's really bright, and we can see it, and I think our guys are excited. Our seniors know um, they're they're approaching the end, you know, um, and we all want to make the best of it, and I think that's that's a big, a big part, and we're healthy, um, you know. Uh, COVID aside, injuries aside, we are we are – doing well, and knock on wood, we keep it going. This past game against Mar Day was a huge win. What do you think caused the spark for your team against them? Uh, our home environment was incredible. Uh, the fanatics, the fans, uh, the, the, the energy was fantastic, you know, second to none. Um, but I also think our guys were a little amped up. The last two years we've played Mar Day in the Open Division, and uh, one year, you know, uh, Mason Hooks, the 2020 uh, we lost with a chance to go to the Open Finals. And last year, um, had we beaten them, you know, we would have had a chance as well um, to secure a, an open a, a spot in the finals with wins over the two and three seeds. So, um, you know, the, the fortunate thing for us was I didn't have to motivate our guys very much. Uh, you know, modern day being who they are historically, uh, a great team, great program, very well coached, beating us the two years prior in the playoffs. Uh, and frankly, Notre Dame, you know, it's it's a league team who beat us. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't had to say much to our guys. They're, they're excited and ready to go. Now, talking on Notre Dame, they're one of two teams who have beat you this season. What do you think will be the biggest factor in order to get that win? Uh, our defense. Um, everything we do starts with our defense. If we, if we can do a great job controlling um, their two guys, uh, Ben and Dusty, um, we'll, we'll, we'll really put ourselves in position to uh, – to make the plays that we need to make on the offensive end. Um, we, we saw some things we did really well in that first game. We saw some things we needed to improve on, and uh, we're really excited that um, if we can do the job on the defensive end and really hit the glass, that we, we, we like our chances. And everyone is hitting very consistent shots against modern day. Cameron Thrower hit fi- or 17 points, Brady Dunlap hit 14, and Landon Lewis hit 13 points. How do you make sure your team stays grounded and locked in for the upcoming game? Well, you know, they do what they do because our guys do what they do. Um, it's all connected. Um, we feel like at, at all times on the court we have mismatches and opportunities for guys to score, but we also know we have to have balance in order for those mismatches to if be a mism- in fact a mismatch. Um, so everybody staying connected, everybody working together, and everybody finding each other when they're open is, is a huge key to our success offensively. Uh, and then it's just that natural aggression. We want you to be aggressive and let it rip when it's your time. Don't hesitate and let it go. You know, you were talking about looking back at last time you took on Notre Dame and what happened and what went wrong. Sort of. Was there one thing that sort of stood out to you that was the difference maker? Uh, you know, listen, their guys made some tough shots, um, some tough contested shots. Uh there are a few timing things and, and, and rotational issues defensively that I thought we had um, that led to open shots for other guys on their team. Um, but I, overall, I just didn't feel like we were very connected uh, on the offensive end and defensive end. And uh, I, I think we're, we're in a much better place. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity to compete again and, and have a chance at those guys. We were looking over the film yesterday, actually, and just watching it, you could sort of feel that you guys honestly were controlling the momentum of the game for most of it up until probably midway through the third quarter. Then, as you said, they hit some tough shots, specifically Dusty and uh, Ben Stolzberg, and that sort of changed the momentum of the game. And obviously, it was limited capacity crowd, so that did play a factor, and COVID and other sort of things. But how do you tread this time around that even if they're going to hit their shots, they're good shooters, but you limit their attempts and not get phased if they go on a run here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, number one, we, we've got to do a better job on those two guys. Uh, we've got to make sure their, t- their catches are a lot more difficult and that we're not giving them as much space as they had last game. We will live with contested jump shots, but we ideally want to force them into, into very, very tough twos. Um, if we can do that, we feel like we'll, we'll have a great chance. The other thing um, on the offensive end, so much of basketball is timing and rhythm. Um, and that being our first week back offensively and with the way they played and switching um, 
all screens and, and, and creating matchup problems. I think that understanding for our guys, that timing, that cohesion just wasn't there. And uh, we, we hope that it's there this time. That sort of leads perfectly into my next question, actually. On a couple coaches' corners back a couple weeks ago, you said that the difference in that game was that in that third quarter, you guys sort of got gassed out, right? It was your first game back from COVID. With that not being the case now, how do you think that's going to affect the game plan? Well, we're in much better shape. Um, <clears throat> we did a tremendous job down the stretch of, of conditioning, competing, um, and playing. Uh, you know, I, I was a little worried heading into the modern day game that we hadn't played a game in over nine days. Um, but our practices have been intense. Um, we, we had created enough balance of, of getting up and down the court with staying in the half court with some mild conditioning um, just to kind of re recenter us a little bit. Um, and, and those games in between, the Korean Lutheran game was a great game for us. Um, that, that was really high energy, uh, big physical matchup. And then the, the, the Chaminade game was up and down a little bit. And so we were able to really condition our guys in that as well. So, so those were big things and big factors for us. So I think um, all being said, we're, we're in a much better place. Our guy, everybody is healthy. Um, nobody is still uh, dealing with remnants of COVID. Uh, so we feel good. Speaking on like improvement throughout the season, you guys have just been on a climax all year long, and it seems like you're peaking right now. And how do you keep make sure that your guys stay like doing that throughout the playoffs? Uh, you know, the, the goal every year is to be your best at the end, right? Um, we don't get too excited. We never get too high or too low um, throughout the, the process. And that's the beginning, middle, and, and even towards the end. You know, the goal is to get better. And, and um, I always say in the beginning of the year, we're trying to figure out who we are. In the middle of the year, we're trying to get good at what we do. And at, by the end of the year, we want understanding, right? We want to understand what we're trying to do. And I think we're approaching that phase um, and really starting to understand. It. And listen, it helps uh, when you're a senior and you're approaching the end. The only thing that matters is winning, right? And and I think our seniors feel that and they're demonstrating that with their leadership. Um, our juniors are kind of understanding like, hey, I'm not a junior anymore. Uh, and same with our sophomores and our freshmen. And you know, the, the biggest thing for us is staying healthy. Uh, you know, Christian Ori went down in the Korean Lutheran game and will most likely be out for the season. And that kind of limits our depth a little bit. Um, but other guys are going to have to step up and, um, and, and we're going to have to do a really good job uh, defending and, and, and finding each other and working for each other on the offensive end. With Christian being out, how will Nick Kamenia's impact on the team be even more needed? Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be big. You know, he, he's such a versatile piece who can do so many little things for us um, and a great talent. Uh, we're going to need him to really rise to the occasion and, and be a factor out there, whether it be on ball defense, spacing the court, hitting open shots or guarding, you know, uh, other forwards, you know, to buy Jacob and Landon some time as well. Uh, the beauty is we have some versatility. You know, Cameron Thrower is so strong. Um, he's such an uh, underrated uh, physical guy that we've actually put him at times on some of the bigger guys on the court. When we played Kareem Luther and he was guarding uh, their 7-footer and 6'10 guy at times for us and, and holding his own. So, you know, that his ability, Brady at 6'7", six, 6'8", six, um, to guard multiple positions. Uh, you know, we, we just have to be versatile and we have to rise. I don't want to be too bold here, but... I just feel like looking back at that modern day game, you know, you talked about the past two years. It's been that one last hump that past teams just haven't been able to get over for different reasons. But you've coached a lot of different talented players in your time here and Johnny Juzang, Adam Hinton, a lot of other guys. What is what makes this team different? You know, they beat modern day. They did it. And now they have this sort of weight off their backs and they can go now play Notre Dame and hopefully beat Sierra Canyon. And furthermore, win a open division title. You know, every season and every team is so different. Um, the 2020 team with Mason Hooks, Truman Gettings, Spencer Hubbard, uh, they were they were ground and pound, physical, nasty team um, that, that just really liked to mix it up. Um, last year's team, uh, we were we were we were a little razzle dazzle. We liked to shoot a lot of threes, We'd get up and down Cameron and Adam Brady, you know, Landon. Jacob Truman, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this year's team, um, you know, just the, the versatility. Uh, you know, at times we can switch one through five and have Jacob Huggins guarding a guard and stay in front of him. It, you know, it's that 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 versatility and the ability to just kind of maneuver on the fly a little bit and not lose much. I think has really done a has really made this group really special. Obviously, 
and then their chemistry. Um, you know, I, very <laughs> rarely have I had a team where we've had, you know, 20 assists in, in a game, let alone, um, let alone, you know, close to averaging that. I mean, there have been times where we've approached the 30 assist margin, uh, and that's special, you know, especially in the high school game, um, to be able to do that, to find each other and, and have that trust. And I think it's a testament to our guys, their talent level, their work ethic and belief in one another. You know, we all know that Notre Dame is Tuesday, and we don't want to look too far ahead, but you do have a very big game against Sierra Canyon on Friday, a very talented team, pretty sure that the one seed in open division, one or two seed. Regardless, how does your team stay focused on preparing for Notre Dame and not letting the hype of another big game right on Friday sort of get to them? You know, if it was any other team, I would say this would be at the forefront of my mind. Yeah. Given the party that those guys had in our locker room after beating us uh, and our guys being within the earshot of it, I don't know that I'm going to have to say much. Um, I don't know that they're thinking about Sierra Canyon or anybody besides Notre Dame. And uh, we are extremely excited for this opportunity to play them again. And I think uh, I think our guys are looking forward to it uh, more than I am. And looking back at like Sierra Canyon versus Notre Dame, Sierra Canyon beat them 89 to 70. Um, with Amari Bailey scoring, I'm not sure how many, but it was a lot of points. <laughs> um, how are you preparing to stop such a powerhouse team? You know, I'm not sure you do. Um, I, I think um, as we'll get down the road here and look at the tape, which we haven't yet, um, you know, the, the couple things will be handling pressure. Um, they, they put a tremendous amount of pressure on the ball. They trap from everywhere. Um, they try and create uh, chaos. Uh, so I think our ability to handle pressure, control tempo, and work for the shots that we want as opposed to the shots that they are giving uh, will play a huge factor in our success. Um, you know, you, you don't you don't stop great players. Uh, ben Schultzberg, Dusty Schirmer are going to make plays, and they're going to make shots. They're going to make tough shots. They're going to make some easy shots. No different than Cameron Thrower or Brady Dunlap and, and Landon Lewis, and the list goes on and on, Dante Russell, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what we have to do is be ourselves. We have to be disciplined. Uh, we have to win the glass. We have to control the glass. Um, for them, they get a lot of offensive rebounds that create a lot of second-chance points. So we have to eliminate the extras uh, and try and control as much as we can. And if we can do that, I think we'll, we'll put ourselves in position to, ha to have a chance. Yeah. And looking at the Sierra Canyon game, it seems like it's just being talked about everywhere. There's an article that just came out in the LA Times that said this is the showdown that everybody's waiting for. How do you guys mentally prepare for that and just all the hype surrounding this game? You know, um, I think we've had a lot of hype around us all year, you know, and um, I think our guys have understood there have been expectations and expectations are high. And, uh, with that comes a certain amount of responsibility. And, and we've learned um, from previous games that we can't overlook anybody. Um, we understand that we're going to get everyone's best shot. We're going to get Notre Dame's best shot tomorrow. Uh, and that's the most important thing. Um, in order for Sierra Canyon to matter, we have to take care of business tomorrow. And, and, that's kind of been our mantra um, as it pertains to anybody, whether it's Crespi or Birmingham or, or uh, Notre Dame. You know, it's, hey, let's take care of business. Uh, and frankly, today our, is our most important day because it's the next thing on our schedule, which is our practice, right? So we have to be really locked into that. We have to be uh, energetic, enthusiastic. And, and if we are, I feel good about tomorrow. And then from there, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of Sierra Canyon and worry about them. But, you know, it's the open division. Um, we are two games away from a chance to compete for an open division championship. I, I, I genuinely believe our guys are, no, it's one game at a time. Uh, this is an experienced group who understands who's been here and they'll be ready to go when the time comes. I feel like every time we're talking to you, it's always talking about such great things about this team. What do you think is their greatest accomplishment this year? You know, it's funny. We said this to our, I said this to our staff. I said, uh, we're, we're the most miserable 21 and two team I've ever seen in my life. Um, and, and it's that, you know, it's not that we don't appreciate or understand. I think it's just that we know where we want to go. And I think the same can be said for our guys. Um, there, there's not 
it, it's not often where I have to walk into practice and, and motivate us or get us to go harder. Uh, I actually find myself pulling back and saying, we're going 50%, not 75, 80, slow down. <laughs> um, you know, so so I think that's the beauty. Um, and, and the thing that I think um, I, I appreciate most is that they're as invested and have an understanding of, of what we have and how special this team is, in, in my opinion. Um, and uh, I don't think they want it to end. And I think they want to keep getting better, which is special. You guys called up two sophomores in Josh Enkelberg and uh, Nikola Kalisher's store coming into the playoffs. How's their presence affected the team on and off the court? Well, they've been great. Um, for you know, we, we always like to bring up a couple guys. A guy who's practicing with us also is Chris Spencer, uh, Jr., who, who is a really good athlete and, and has a chance to be a good player. But all they do is bolster um, the scout team a little bit. They give us uh, some different looks. We kind of give them a little more freedom, and then they kind of get an understanding of how we prepare and a general feel for um, speed of the game. Because as as you may or may not be aware, but you go from freshman to JV, and that's like times four, of, uh, you know, as far as um, speed of the game, physicality. And then you go from JV to varsity, and you might as well add another 10 on there because the, the size, the length, the athleticism, the strength, the speed, the nuance, um, it's just magnified. And... Uh, to get those guys that experience and taste, we, we usually do that in hopes of motivating them uh, the, for the off season. Because our 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 general motto is uh, from from the fall through the winter, you're all about Harvard Westlake basketball. Well, from the spring through the summer, you need to be all about you. It's your time to be selfish. Go be selfish in the weight room. Go be selfish in the gym. Go be selfish with your nutrition. Be selfish with your approach and whatever it is that you need to be your best. So that come the fall. You're ready to go and contribute um so so that we hope that that kind of motivates them to a degree uh, but they've been great along with you know brando fuqua who, who's been with us all year derek schneider cuban molzen uh you know the list goes on and on just just a really good group of guys and with christian going down uh it helped create a little more balance and competitiveness in practice you know we're really glad that we could talk about those guys a little as we near the end of this episode in the end of the season obviously playoffs we wanted to finish this one on a different note though we wanted to bring up you commented on instagram after friday night's win that the fanatics were the difference against modern day it's going to be tropical theme night tuesday and taper what's your message to the fanatics bring it we, we we want we we want you guys so loud the whole time that uh we can't hear ourselves that that bring it we, be the difference um you are the difference thank you so much for joining us good luck to you guys versus notre dame and sierra canyon I'm Danny Lynch with Jake Lancer. We'll see you next time. Enjoy the game.